This is Ryan with Parts Doctor, and today we're going over appliance capacitors and how to test them. We'll need a multimeter that reads capacitance or continuity. Let's get started. Before starting, it's important to ensure that the capacitor is discharged. The easiest way to discharge a capacitor is placing a rubber insulated screwdriver or rubber insulated needle nose pliers across the terminals. Be careful not to touch the non-insulated part of the tool while discharging. There are also special capacitor discharge tools that you can buy or make. Failure to discharge may result in electrical shock or electrocution. Capacitors come in different shapes and sizes depending on their functions and what appliances they are found in but they all do the same thing. They store and release electricity. There are two main types of capacitors used on appliances, start capacitors and run capacitors. For example, on a refrigerator, the run capacitor helps the compressor to run more efficiently and lowers energy consumption. And on a washing machine, the start capacitor helps the motor start. If the capacitor fails, it may cause the compressor or motor to not start or run properly. On the capacitor, the microfarad rating is designated by UF or MFD millionths of a farad. The microfarad rating is a unit of capacitance. The higher the rating, the more energy that it can store. Plus or minus percentage next to the microfarad rating is the tolerance that the capacitor should measure within. VAC is the voltage rating, V is the voltage, and AC is the current type. AC is alternating current. 50 slash 60 hertz is the frequency of the electricity. For instance, this run capacitor has a rating of 10 microfarad plus or minus 5%, 550 volts AC, 50 slash 60 hertz. This high voltage capacitor has a rating of 1.00 microfarad, plus or minus 3%, 2300 volts AC. First, we're going to do a visual check of the capacitor. If the capacitor is leaking any fluid or has any bulges in the housing, it is most likely bad. Now we're going to check the capacitance of the capacitor. For this, we'll need a multimeter with a capacitance setting. Turn your multimeter to the capacitance setting, then place the probes on each of the terminals. Here the microfarad measurement should be within the plus or minus tolerant shown on the capacitor label. Here are the test results of three different capacitors. If the reading is within the tolerance, the capacitor is good, and if not, it should be replaced. If you don't have a multimeter that can check capacitance, you can use a multimeter with a continuity setting to check if the capacitor is charging and discharging. This test won't tell you exactly if the capacitor is good or bad. It'll only tell you if the capacitor is charging and discharging. Turn the multimeter to the continuity setting, place the probes on each terminal for a couple of seconds, then swap the probes. If you receive a quick beep, this indicates the capacitor is charging and discharging. If it doesn't beep, then the capacitor may be bad. If you have a bad capacitor and you need to purchase a new one, you can check out our website, partsdoctor.com. We'll leave a link in the description below. You wanna make sure that you're searching with the model number from the tag on your appliance to make sure you got the correct part. So that's it for this video. If you have any tips or tricks of your own, let us know in the comments below. And if you like fixing things, please consider subscribing.